So I mentioned I want to specifically talk about a surface pressure trough. It's probably one of the most common questions I get on these charts. They see a dashed line and they don't really know what that means to them. So we're going to talk about a surface pressure trough. But first, let's can do a quick review of some of the things we've talked about already in relationship to what you see on the surface analysis or even the prog charts. So on these, these charts, you're going to see you know, over a dozen different kinds of symbols. And each symbol has a specific meaning that may, may or may not be important to you, depending on the situation. So one of the things you'll see on some of these charts, especially this, the surface analysis chart, you'll see these things called station models, essentially. And those are, set, are there to tell you in a graphical form, if you will, um, what the surface observation is at that particular station, or typically in this case, it's usually an airport. The way they design this is that in the upper left, you'll see the temperature. The lower left, you'll see the dew point temperature. Then you'll have the pressure. So this is 1,010.7 millibars. You'll see the, uh, the weather type. In this case, it's showing moderate rain. Uh, they'll fill in the, the sky cover. Unusual to have moderate rain with clear skies, but normally this would be set up to have a quarter out for scattered, or it would have three quarters for broken or completely filled in for overcast. And then you have your wind speed and direction with your wind barb. And the other thing, which I spend a lot of time looking at here, is the pressure trend. So this says it's 0.6 millibars over a three-hour period, and it's falling. In fact, it has a little trend symbol here where it's been falling and then being uh, essentially gone steady at that point. So it helps you understand in, in an area, you want to you wanna pay attention to that because when you see pressure falling, typically that means the frontal system or weather is moving toward you. You like to kind of see pressure rising, on the other hand, which in it, uh, tends to tell you that weather is improving in that region. You also see surface pressure centers, whether it's a high pressure or low pressure that you see here, that will be depicted on the chart. Again, that's the pressure center, the highest or lowest pressure in the area. You'll see lines of constant pressure or isobars shown here. There's also, to really confuse you on some of these charts, they will actually put intermediate isobars, unfortunately, uh, that are dashed. Basically, isobars are presented every four millibars. When there's weak pressure gradient, a lot of times the forecasters will pen in there, if you will, an intermediate isobar every two millibars. You also may see something like a squall line, two dots and a dash in front, typically uh, uh, ahead of a front. That's where we usually see that, but that'll be depicted there. And that indicates typically that you'll have some kind of severe convection that's producing very strong and gusty straight line winds in ahead of that squall line. You may also see something that's labeled outflow boundary. Looks a lot like a trough, but you'll see a little label ahead of that called outflow boundary right next to it. And essentially, an outflow boundary is, is the exhaust from thunderstorms. So if you had a large area of thunderstorms develop, the, the, the exhaust or outflow from that will emanate away from the convection that produced it. And then forecasters can track where that outflow boundary is located. And in some cases, the outflow boundary can be a mini little front, little mini cold front, if you will, a gust front of sorts, and therefore can produce upward motion and may contribute to the development of other convection. And these outflow boundaries actually lay around and persist into the next day, and forecasters can track their, where those are, and they can be the focal point of the next day's round of convection. And of course, you have frontal systems, such as a cold front, a warm front, um, stationary occluded fronts, and then also don't forget the dry line here on the lower left. Usually a dry line is a separation of air masses. Usually you're dealing with warm, moist air, especially in Texas and up into Oklahoma, or 
And then the other side of the dry line tends to be very hot, dry air. So it's really more what they call a dew point line rather than a, uh, a, front, uh, a front itself. So a dry line can contribute to pretty significant amount of convection because it is a density discontinuity that can provide the necessary, necessary uh, ingredients for development of thunderstorms. And then last but not least, you'll see something called a surface pressure trough. And unfortunately, that looks remarkably like an outflow boundary or the even the intermediate isobars, but it's actually a surface trough. It won't be labeled as a surface trough. It just won't have any label associated with it. And that's essentially the, the guidelines that they use. I know not very friendly, but essentially that's the way it's depicted. So a surface trough is just really an elongated area of low pressure. It doesn't have really any distinct low level center, no surface low pressure system as a result of it. And again, think about you digging a trough in your backyard to bury a pipe. It's a pressure trough in this particular case. It's a divot or a low spot in the pressure area. And forecasters like to point that out. Frontal systems actually all, are also surface pressure troughs, but they separate air masses. So frontal systems separate air masses, but pressure troughs do not. They're not a separation of an air mass. And if the air is on the drier side, which it typically is in these situations, most of the time a pressure trough will have little or no significant weather associated with it, and usually is pretty harmless in most cases. So similar to a front, a surface pressure trough is actually a situation where you'll have convergence. And you can see here in this particular case um, that the winds here are essentially out of the southeast or south on the east side of this pressure trough right shown right here. And up here, you'll see the winds are more out of the west or northwest. Very similar to what you see in a frontal system, and that's where you see the air is going to be converging there. If you go out west, the southwest U.S., that pressure trough out there is pretty much ubiquitous most of the year. We call that a thermal trough, something you'll typically find in the desert southwest. Again, generally pretty benign. If you look at lee side of a mountain range, you see this a lot on the Rockies, also in the Appalachians, you'll see a lee side trough. Usually again, generally pretty benign. But during the warm season, when we're dealing with significant weather events, um, a surface pressure trough can sometimes be the impetus for the development of that deep moist convection or thunderstorms. Because again, surface pressure trough represents an area of convergence. So this could be a situation where we may see the air converge and help or enhance the ability for it to air to rise. And, and essentially, if the air is unstable in that region, it may again contribute, but it's again, not something that we typically see. As you can see in this pressure trough, look at all the, the station models here, all are completely um, empty, meaning there's no clouds associated with any of this area. And there's certainly no real weather anywhere in this region either. So, and this is not a weather maker on most situations.